the founding fathers of this, uh, the United States, thought about human nature, and that's why the, there's a discussion about the freedoms that are necessary. They really deeply deliberated about that, and I think the same could possibly be done for AGI. It is true that history, human history shows that we tend towards centralization, or at least when we achieve centralization, a lot of bad stuff happens. When there's a dictator, a lot of dark, bad things happen. The question is, can AGI become that dictator? Can AGI, when developed, become the centralizer because of its power? Maybe it has the same, because of the alignment of humans perhaps, the same tendencies, the same uh, Stalin-like tendencies to centralize and manage centrally mm -hmm. the allocation of resources. And you can even see that as a compelling argument on the surface level. Well, AGI is so much smarter, so much more efficient, so much better at allocating resources. Why don't we outsource it to the AGI? And then mm -hmm. eventually, whatever forces that uh, corrupt the human mind with power could do the same for AGI. It would just say, well, humans are dispensable. We'll get rid of them. Do the Jonathan Swift modest proposal from a few centuries ago, I think the 1700s, when he satirically suggested that, I think it's in Ireland, that the, the, the children of poor people are fed as food to the rich people, and that would be a good idea because it decreases the amount of poor people and gives extra income to the poor people. So it's on several accounts decreases the amount of poor people. Therefore, more people become rich. Uh, of course, it m misses a fundamental piece here that's hard to put into a mathematical equation of the basic value of human life. So all of that to say, are you concerned about AGI being the very centralizer of power that you just talked about? I do think that um, right now there's a bias towards over centralization of AI because of uh, compute density and centralization centralization of data and how we're training uh, models. Um, I think over time we're going to run out of data to scrape over the internet, and I think that well, actually, I'm working on increasing the compute density mm -hmm. so that compute can be everywhere and acquire information and test hypotheses in the environment in a distributed uh, fashion. I think that fundamentally centralized cybernetic control, so having one intelligence that is massive, that you know fuses many sensors and is trying to perceive the world accurately, predict it accurately, predict many, many variables, and control it, right, enact its will upon the world, I think that's just never been the optimum. Right, like let's say you have uh, a company. You know, if you have a company, I don't know, of ten thousand people that all report to the CEO, even if that CEO is an AI, I think it would struggle to fuse all of the information that is coming to it, and then predict the whole system, and then to en enact its its will. What has emerged in nature, and in corporations, and all sorts of systems, is a notion of sort of hierarchical cybernetic control, right? You have, uh, you know, in a company it would be, you have like the individual contributors, they're self-interested and, and, and uh, they're trying to achieve their, their tasks and they, they have a, a fine, in terms of time and space, if you will, control loop and, and, and field of perception, right? Um, they have their code base. Let's say you're in a software company, they have their code base, they iterate it on it uh, intraday, right? And then the management maybe checks in, it has a wider scope, it has, let's say, five reports, right? And then it samples each uh, person's update once per week. And then you can go up the chain and you have larger time scale and, and greater scope. And that seems to have emerged as sort of the, the optimal way to, to control systems. And, and really, that's what capitalism gives us, right? You have these, these hierarchies and you can even have like parent companies and so on. And so that is far more fault tolerant 
in quantum computing, that's my field I came from, we have a, a concept of, of this fault tolerance and quantum error correction, right? Quantum error correction is detecting a fault that came from noise, predicting how it's propagated through the system, and then correcting it, right? So it's a cybernetic loop. And it turns out that uh, decoders uh, that are hierarchical, and at each level, the hierarchy are local, uh, perform the best by far, and are far more fault tolerant. And the reason is if you have a non-local decoder, then you have one fault at, at this uh, control node and the whole system sort of crashes. Similarly to if you have uh, you know, uh, one CEO that everybody reports to and that CEO goes on vacation, the whole company comes to a crawl, right? Um, and so to me, I think that, yes, we're seeing a tendency towards centralization of AI, but I think there's gonna be a correction over time where intelligence is gonna go closer to the perception and we're gonna, we're gonna break up AI into um, um, smaller subsystems that communicate with one another and form a sort of meta uh, system. So if you look at the hierarchies there in the world today, there's nations and those are hierarchical, but in relation to each other, nations are anarchic, so it's an anarchy. Mm. Would you, do you foresee a world like this, where there's not a over, what'd you call it, a centralized cybernetic control? L centralized locus of control, yeah. Is the, so like, that's suboptimal, you're saying? Yeah. So it would be always a state of competition at the very yeah. top level? Yeah, just like, you know, in a company, you may have like uh, two units working on similar technology and competing with one another and you you prune the one that performs not as well, right? And that's a sort of selection process for a tree or a product gets killed, right? And then a whole org gets fired. And that's this process of of trying new things and, and, and shedding old things that didn't work is this, it's what gives us adaptability and helps us converge on, uh, you know, the technologies and things to do that are most good. I just hope there's not a failure mode that's unique to AGI versus humans, because you're describing human systems mostly right now. Right. I just hope when there's a monopoly on AGI in one company that we'll see the same thing we see with humans, which is another company will spring up and start competing effectively. I mean, that's been the case so far, right? Yeah. We have OpenAI, we have Anthropic, now we have XAI. Uh, you know, we had Meta even for open source, was, and now we have Mistral, right, which is highly competitive. And so that's the beauty of capitalism. You don't have to trust any one party too much because we're kind of always hedging our bets at every level. There's always competition, and that's the most um, beautiful thing to me, at least, is that the whole system is always shifting and always adapting. And maintaining that dynamism is how we avoid tyranny, right? Ma making sure that um, everyone has access to to these tools, to, to these models, and can contribute to the research, uh, um, avoids a sort of neural tyranny where very few pe pe people have control over AI for the world and, and use it to oppress uh, those around them.